the first time that I knew that, you know, I was being recognized for something other than my Hollywood past or especially Boy Meets World was when someone at a Comic-Con came up to me and said, I have been masturbating to you for like over 20 years. Before you ever even thought about Before it, I right? Before I even thought about it, they were just watching the show. Yeah. And then now they can buy my vagina. This is Sexy Funny Raw, where we chat all about the world of sex. From dating and relationships, all the way to the adult industry itself. I'm Sylvia Sage, and this is my Pornspective. Answering all the questions you weren't even brave enough to ask Google. Get ready, because Sexy Funny Raw starts now. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sexy Funny Raw. I am your host, Sylvia Sage, and I am joined in studio today with Maitland Ward. Maitland, say hello to the people. Hello to the people. (laughs) So if you are not familiar with Maitland, you really should be. So Maitland has starred in several things uh, throughout the years. She started in mainstream acting. You started with... um, doing uh, soaps and then you went to boy meets world (laughs) and you actually starred in um white girls white chicks white chicks i don't know why i know there's another (laughs) (laughs) white chicks yes um and then you made your way into the adult industry yes now that is completely backward for most people because (laughs) most people assume that you would start in adult and then somehow find your way into adult or into mainstream however you broke the mold and you did so in such an outstanding way you when you came in to adult you didn't do so like most of us do i came in with a very seedy porn agent uh, i came in doing very bottom dollar stuff you i don't know. mean to laugh i just yeah. like it's like wow the story yeah yeah so i came in my first few years were just pure torture for me oh um, i'm sorry oh, oh geez bad agent is uh-huh. what it turned into right. be but I had to learn my way through the industry, but you came in with such a bang, but you came in already kind of having a a notion of what the industry at large was or what Hollywood was at large, right? Right, right. And I came in a lot on on my own terms. I mean, I had very slowly throughout the years and decades of uh, like my progressive, my progression as, you know, a woman and a human and just finding who I wanted to be and my sexuality. And then I found that I enjoyed performing. And I did my own content stuff for like a year and a half before I even did anything to do with professional yeah. porn. So I already was kind of into that training ground of like, I started slow, but it's kind of like when a lobster boils. If it's in the water, it doesn't know that it's boiling at the end Yeah. <laughs> instead of just being flung into it. Yeah. But yeah, I was very fortunate to uh, hook up with the right people who really led me along into uh, a successful adult career yeah. and then you know yeah and it does help that I was trained in Hollywood and I knew all about that end of things and uh, I could really mesh both of those worlds yeah it's so interesting I mean first off Maitland wrote this incredible <laughs> book by the way rated x which it was sold out at the first Barnes and Noble I went to oh, you should great. know okay, yeah good. so I had to call a second location before I went and got it That's uh, great. and it's um how porn liberated her from Hollywood and it really goes through your entire life history and it's yeah wildly fascinating <laughs> um so I wanted to know what made you make such a dramatic switch from mainstream into porn you know what it's everybody says oh my gosh you just went into porn how did you do that this crazy like even even old friends of mine in hollywood who hadn't paid attention i guess over the years and they're like you're all of a sudden decided to do porn and it really wasn't an all of a Mm -hmm. sudden sort of deal i was progressing slowly i had stepped away from mainstream hollywood because i was getting typecast as basically my character on boy meets world Mm -hmm. even though it had been years past it it still was like people like you're on that show it's such an iconic show people just see you like that and which wasn't a bad thing but uh basically the thing that they wanted me to graduate to is soccer mom and that wasn't yeah. kind of the thing that i wanted to do so i stepped away and i went to school i moved to new york for a couple of years i got married i like def- just kind of stepped away from it and the real thing that started my path to adult i guess you would say was Boy Meets World had a spinoff called Girl Meets World mm-hmm. that was coming back. 
and we got a lot of attention like on social media and at this time this was back in when it very first was announced i think it was like 2013 so a, a while ago now um social media was just really on the rise like yeah. i only had like a i don't even know how many instagram followers like 500 or something yeah. and i was like my friends it was people that i knew who who did it but it wasn't like a big fan base kind of thing but when the attention came back from for girl meets world i realized that wow this social media thing i can do my own thing and have people be you know follow me and it was yeah. it was like a growing thing so i did my own thing which kind of uh made people at Disney and and <laughs> and Girl Meets World, else. Boy Meets World, that whole set upset. Yeah. But I found that I was growing this following, like doing sexy cosplay, which I love mm -hmm. to do. Nothing porn yet. It was just more provocative, exhibitionist, doing yeah. body paint shoots, doing just funny setups that I like to do uh, photo stuff. And I started gaining really attraction and following, and especially on Snapchat which uh, I knew the first time that I knew that, you know, I was being recognized for something other than my Hollywood past or especially Boy Meets World was when someone at a Comic-Con came up to me and said, I'm such a fan of yours. And I thought, oh, Boy Meets World, possibly white chicks. Uh, and then he's like, I, I love you on Snapchat. I watch ah. it all the time. And so I was like, wow, there was more and more of this space there. And that yeah. really was the the launching pad yeah. for me to eventually get into selling my own content, which yeah. only was going to be Playboy-esque type photos at first, because I loved that. And, yeah. and then I was like, oh, girl, girl stuff, because I had done some girl, girl photo shoots, which weren't pornographic right. all the way. But, you know, they kind of imply that. But on this road in my content, I was really dis discovering everything along with my fan base who was, you know, paying for my Patreon, which was in the beginning. Yeah. And um, so it was just, I kind of just grew along in that year and a half. And then, then everything in professional porn happened. <laughs> One of the things I found very interesting in your book, which is an incredible read, I did not put it down when I picked oh, it up, um, is that you said that you had the the trajectory, I guess, for your career was going to be winding you up in those um um, Hallmark movies yeah. and you were like that is the last place I want to be I, is in a Hallmark movie I know I think it's like the graveyard yeah. for 90 stars or 90s 2000 stars that are just it's um yeah and I know so many people end up there and yeah. they have careers there and so yeah. that was not what I wanted to do at all yeah. so uh and I it's was, funny because to me you have that wholesome look <laughs> you have the look of Hallmark that they would have loved to have you star <laughs> yeah. in those movies instead you know? I'm doing gangbangs <laughs> <laughs> which we all very much appreciate by and the way I know and you know the fans it's, it's interesting because I have a lot of fans who say I have been masturbating to you for like over 20 years. Before you ever even thought about Before it. Before I right. even thought about it, they were just watching the show. Yeah. And then now they can buy my vagina. So. Yeah. I, and your asshole. And my asshole. Yeah. It's an amazing time, people. <laughs> yeah. Were you ever afraid of the backlash that was going to come from doing adult? Because we all know there's so much negative press that comes into adult. Yeah, it's interesting. I really did not put that into the equation. I was, first of all, when I was doing my content, it felt like more of a, I won't say a private thing, but it did feel like people that I, you know, my fans who were buying subscriptions were yeah. seeing some more provocative stuff and stuff. Yeah. But it still felt like this little secret <laughs> society where it wasn't, I don't know how it didn't get slipped to mainstream more mm -hmm. that this was happening, but it didn't until I started doing professional stuff. Yeah. Um, but by the time I did the professional stuff, I was like, no, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do it. I never, I don't know. I never had that kind of worry. Like, yeah. and I don't know why. I guess because I was had an established fan base and I was making money on my content and I was doing all this. So by the time I got to professional porn, it was like, like I. You were good. Yeah, and I went to, and I had such positive press yeah. from it when I released. It was the big story. It was number yes. one Google trend all day that Rachel from Boy Meets World was doing porn. Yes. And that was when I did the dry, movie Drive. For deeper and vixen and you had even said bernie sanders had a heart attack he, that day and he, you beat him yeah, out the new, i beat bernie <laughs> the news of bernie sanders heart attack and that was yeah so all but i would everybody had told me ahead of time because i knew this big this film that i was doing for deeper was going to come out yeah and i was proud of it and it was a real full feature film yeah. that married you know acting and directing and writing and everything like that and filming 
making um, and porn. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to announce this. And everybody from porn and from mainstream was like, that I knew was like, no, they're going to tear you apart. Yeah. And I said, I don't, you know, no, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care if they tear me apart. It'll get news. It'll get press. Everything, you know. Just, yeah. But they didn't. And I, yeah. I had a friend who, uh, who was friendly with a reporter who she broke the story and she really set the set the table for that because she's she was like Maitland's taking her authentic journey yeah she was very positive but everybody picked up on that but for the most part for like I don't know how many outlets around the world picked that up but they it was mostly like wow yeah it's supposed to be important but it was shocking and I totally get those shock yeah headlines but it wasn't tearing me down or negative yeah. it was more having fun with it and I think that's what I've always done throughout Born, I don't I don't even feed into that stuff, that worry or shame. Yeah. Good for you. <clears throat> I also I should mention you were an only child. Or you are. Mm-hmm. You weren't weren't. You are still <laughs> currently had, had an a only child. That just <laughs> yeah. Popped up. No, yeah. Just uh still an only child. Mm-hmm. And so I found it very interesting and I what you mm-hmm. said about your family, but tell them how your family did respond to it because you grew up religious yeah. and an only child. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't really just to the point where they were beating me with switches if I right. didn't. But I was in a very, like, you know, I won't say normal, but like that kind of household that is a Christian household mm-hmm. where you just were, you followed the rules and you definitely did what you were supposed to do. And I was always a very golden child and yeah. I wanted to live up to that. I was not somebody who was rebelling and getting punished for things. Yeah, I was I, I was like, I have to live up to everything that I'm supposed to live up to in these mm-hmm. this world with this ideals and stuff. And um, and over time that peeled away and I, I discovered who I was. I had to be authentic to myself. But I was so surprised at my parents' Uh, my grandmother was deceased by this right. time, yeah. so I don't know if she yeah. would have reacted as, as well because she yeah. was the really religious one. But I would hope to think she's proud. But yeah. um, I was so surprised when my parents, my dad got the news by reading the New York Post. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> which didn't come from you, you know. <laughs> didn't like, come yeah. from me. Yeah. I, they had known mm-hmm. that I was doing sexy like cosplay stuff, but yeah. it wasn't to that point. But mm-hmm. Uh, I have to say I was so surprised at the positive reaction that they and the, yeah. the supportive reaction to this day. I mean, they it made me cry. It did. Reading so they it. watched yeah. the Avian Awards this year oh my to see God. my speech, but they're like, "Well, it's a little raunchy." The first, first part, <laughs> but uh, they forwarded and they were so proud. They were just like, oh, "They won." Don't and, listen to the movie titles. Mom. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And I was glad there was no nudity in my clip. Thank you, Avian, for not putting <laughs> yeah <laughs> the nudity on Showtime. But. Um, so, so yeah, it was really, and I, and I honestly think if you have decent people who love you, yeah. I think people a lot of time think, oh, they think the worst scenarios in their mm-hmm. heads, like they're, people are going to abandon them and be against them. And, yeah. but, and then you, the truth comes out and it's like, wait, okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. I mean, of course I know people can have abusive situations, but if right. you have people around you that are, that love you, it most likely is going to. Yeah, what Work I itself out. What I loved was hearing <laughs> your mom say that she had never seen you happier. Yes, and, and that she, was a big fact, and I didn't yeah. even realize that. I did yeah. not even conceptualize that as being a thing, or that people could see that on mm-hmm. me. And I really was, and I was proud, and I was. I felt and I felt such success in porn, and I felt oh, so many things that I hadn't been able to feel in mainstream for a long time. I've just, I've been felt. I'd always been made feel in mainstream like, oh, I'm a has-been from this mm. role that I have mm-hmm. to keep trying to live up to a past role and trying to make people happy with that. But this was like, wow, people accept me for being authentic and myself. And and that was true when I first started selling content because I didn't think that people would really buy it. I it, Like I was getting kicked off of Instagram and Snapchat, especially the yeah. Snapchat stuff for um, – a while and my fans were like, well, why don't you do content and sell some stuff? And I was like, okay, a few people might buy it. Like my big fans might, yeah. uh, might buy a premium Snapchat because Snapchat was the one that was really giving me trouble. Um, and then all of a sudden they overnight, literally overnight, yeah. it was, it was amazing. I was adult, a number one adult creator and it was like, I had this, wait a minute. I was told for so many years, yeah. you cannot be sexy. Nobody will buy your yep. sexy. Nobody will buy what you want to do. Nobody, you can't make a dime on it. Cause you were a Disney star and nobody yes. wanted to see Disney nobody. stars be sexy. But it turns out everyone wants yes. to see Disney stars. <laughs> yeah. Like Another thing I thought was uh, very interesting that 
your mom had said because it, your father had said, well, it does kind of bother me because my friends are asking yeah, they questions. Yeah, asking all these all the press. Yeah. They're like, okay. <laughs> but your mom's reaction to that was what got me teary-eyed because she goes, well, they're old and senile and they won't remember it tomorrow anyway. And I thought, mom, yeah. well done, <laughs> yes, you know? She, yeah, she always puts my dad in check yeah. like that. But yeah. It, that was amazing. Yeah. And I was just such, there was such relief and happiness because that was the real big thing that I was worried about. Of course. We're all, I mean, yeah. I think every single one of us mm-hmm. is terrified to tell our parents, you know, yeah. like I had mixed reactions between my parents. My, my father is very supportive and my mother would like, I've been in yeah. for nearly a decade and she yeah. just now comes around to the fact of like, we can still be people together, you oh, know? Oh, wow. Yeah. She's still very religious and, right. and, right. and thinks that I have tarnished our family, you know, right. in some way, somehow. Right. So that's, uh. it's nice. It's nice to see when people do have like the family support and the yeah. caring and, and you had a very supportive husband. Yes. Also. Very supportive. He was along for the whole journey. Like, yes. The whole way. And I've also had, it's, it's, I thought like people from school or people would be judgmental. I've had yeah. so much positive reaction, especially from women from my school. Amazing. They're, they're all like very, I mean, there's a few really religious ones that won't speak to me anymore. Yeah. But I don't care. Yeah. But, um, but the overwhelming like friends coming forward and saying, I'm so like inspired or I support you. And like, yeah, it's really nice. I love that. <laughs> Did you ever feel like, getting into porn would just end everything for you. Like you would just be done for in Hollywood. No, because I kind of got, I was to the point where I was like, I don't even give a crap. Yeah. Can I curse? No. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I don't yes, even give a shit that I'm like, Hollywood yeah. doesn't um, care about you anymore. Yeah. Care about me anymore. And the, and the weirdest thing is, and the coolest thing too, is that Hollywood started recognizing me again because of porn. I got to write mm. a book because of yeah. porn. I write, you know, articles and I get to have that whole career that I wanted before yeah. that they wouldn't let me have. And so, so much, uh, opportunity and avenues open up because I said no. And I did what mm. I said so no to what they wanted me to do and did my own thing. I mean, I even later on had, uh, I know the book is a lot about, um, Michael Jacobs, mm-hmm. executive producer. And yes. I, I, after everything, the book came out and stuff, I was able to have like an hour and a half conversation with him. Oh really? Yes. And he says he's supportive of me and it wow. was, yeah. Which yeah. I know he was kind of like a father figure to he you. He still is. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to be watching anything and he's not, <laughs> you know, loving it up. That he says, I would rather you be a surgeon. But, <laughs> but we talked through a lot of things that were problematic. That yeah. was the, so that was very nice. Yeah. And um, so that's. Does know. he have that picture hanging of you I in his gotta, office? You know what? He didn't tell me, but he, he has to. I, he did. <laughs> he has to. I know. I don't know which one it is, but I. <laughs> You did mention in the book, and I mm-hmm. I love that you for okay because I don't want to sound rude in any way, but you mm-hmm. were an outsider to the porn industry, and mm-hmm. you and you came into it, and you didn't really know what a lot of us experience on the porn end, but you mm-hmm. got to see that. And one of the things that you had pointed out was the porn discrimination, which happens to all of us, and with banking, um, with housing, mm-hmm. um, I've had multiple banking industries shut me down. I, wow. I haven't had a Venmo. I'm not allowed to have a Venmo any, ever again. Oh, wow. um, I even tried from different IP addresses and they were like, we know who you are. And I was like, okay. Um, so I have had that many of times, but people don't realize that because there is an ethics clause in banking to where they can discriminate against sex workers. And it's the same mm-hmm. for they can discriminate against um, um drug pushers and things of that nature because it's an ethics clause that they don't want to work with these people. Um, Did you experience any of that when you got in? No, I did not experience any of that. Um, I think it's because of my past that I Mm -hmm. also have a mainstream past. So, and I I wonder if other people who had been, you know, mainstream and they kind of get into OnlyFans or anything, they probably don't have that many problems with that as well i yeah. mean i had people like well i imdb credits they uh they shadow banned me on imdb really yeah if you go to the app if you go to google you can see it like all my past credits yeah but on the app they shadow ban because it lists porn wow movies. yeah i know and it's so that's a big that's not banking but it's that kind of thing yeah. of whole discrimination of wow. that and um and it was funny because i uh when you know, the news came out about everything about me doing porn and selling my premium Snapchat and mm-hmm. making all this and on it and everything. 
Snapchat was like, we're shutting down your account. They shut down my public account. Okay. I'm like, I'm still raking yeah. it on the side. Yeah. Yeah. They just shut down my public. Yeah. You know, so now people have to pay more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good for you. The <laughs> word's out. And I know that's a terrible thing. Like people are yeah. discriminated against. And I don't know the full extent of it. I've heard people's stories and mm-hmm. I've. I've heard how terrible that is. And, yeah. you know. Well, I appreciate you at least addressing it. Oh, yeah. And know? I'd like to bring anything to light like that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's absolutely disgusting. And, and I understand, like, drug dealers. Yeah. That's a different thing completely. Than, Not to the banking industry. <laughs> I know. It's like porn. It, we're, it's, it's insane that yeah. sex is so put into this category of just vile evil. and evil mm-hmm. yeah but it's it's yeah it's not the same as yeah. you know a crack dealer yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh so what do you think the biggest difference is between a mainstream set and a porn set what would you say well I have to say well it depends on what kind of set you're talking about mm-hmm. I would like if it's a sitcom set of course you have the audience and you it's and yeah. it's you know big a big production on a big lot. Like did you guys Disney have or, audience yes. at Boy Meets World? Oh, yes. you did. Okay. okay. Yeah, we had, a, and it was nice. It was kind of like doing um, a play every week. Yeah. You do it for the audience, and then a couple times, and and they really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. So, so if you're doing that, it's, it's different. But I would say being on a porn set, especially, I mean, I the mass majority of my thing has been on Vixen sets. Yeah. So it definitely has a bigger crew than. Um, you know, other mm-hmm. that as I hear, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. But so I think it's kind of like being on an independent film set. Yeah, it really feels like the same thing. When I walked in the first time, it felt like a film set. I yeah. mean, it was like cameras, lighting, sound, like makeup. Yeah. It was the same feeling, and I was surprised at how normal it felt. And mm-hmm. I think there's this uh, misconception and this um, stereotype that. Oh my God, porn's going to be this crazy yes. environment. And people ask me that, and I really think that I am sort of an in between to people because they feel like they can ask me questions about porn, and it's not quite as scary as being, yeah. as asking that porn star over there. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they because they feel like, oh, I've been in their living rooms on Friday nights, and mm-hmm. and I'm more of a safe thing. Mm-hmm. But I like that in the way that they ask, so yeah. they have a, somebody to ask. So I'm happy to do that. Um, I think a lot of people think on a porn set it's cocaine and drugs and alcohol and everyone's naked and wearing robes and smoking cigarettes and it's like it's all that corporate (laughs) yeah I know it's very corporate I I was like can you imagine if people were like drugged out it would be like you would throw them off the set yes of course and that is what happens by the way if you are too messed up they will push you off the set because you can't consent to be in this movie yeah. if you're fucked up. Right. So I know people really have this, they have this like 1960s yes. version of what right. pornography on a set is. And it's right. just not that at and all. And they don't, and ever, nobody thinks women are like in charge of anything. Oh, of course not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there's so many women that are so yes. powerful and in charge of making great projects. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, I would say the only difference is, mm-hmm. is, People are naked and there is. That is true. Yeah. And I don't even think about that anymore. Like, Same. <laughs> it's crazy either. how you don't. But you know what it kind of reminds me of is the modeling industry. And I did a little bit of that, but not a lot. But I definitely was around people who were modeling industry yeah. and models. They'll just drop their clothes yes. like nobody's business. Yeah. It doesn't even care. It's the same in the porn industry. Yeah. So it's kind of just that thing you're, you just, it's just normal. Yeah. So it's funny because when I do go to like a, you know, a regular, like any kind of set that isn't porn and they need me to change into something, I start changing and they're like, oh, we have a room for you. And I'm like, oh, I'm so, yeah, I'm I know, sorry. I know. That's <laughs> sorry. <funny. laughs> you don't want to see me naked. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you do. Cause you get so used to nudity. It yeah. doesn't affect you anymore. And you get used to your male talent stroking their dick <laughs> while they're I getting, know. and it's just them <laughs> yeah. getting ready. It's yes. not even weird. It's not sexual. No. It's just what has to happen. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny. I love that you said that. Um, um, okay, so this was an interesting one because you had talked about scripts. Um, mm-hmm. So I wanted to say, like, what is the preparation difference between getting ready for a mainstream scene and getting ready for a porn set? Because, you know, most people as- assume that in pornography there is no acting and no one's no. watching that anyway and just get to the sex. So I know. Yeah. Well, I, how I, is it I different? know. I tell people I, I have three-page monologues that I need to get through. Yes. Before, like, straight through. Um, and so many lines and stuff. 
I think the preparation, and I do think the porn industry could improve on this, mm. is I'm lucky I get the scripts ahead of time. Yeah. And it's more of a planning. Pr- I think I feel terrible when I see a girl get lengthy dialogue, or somewhat. It's not even as lengthy three-page monologues, but still yeah. it's, and they get it right on set. Yep. That's terrible to do to someone. Yeah. If they're already nervous, of course they're not going to perform well. Of course it's going to impact the acting. And yeah. And they're and they're going to be like I have to remember these lines and stuff. If only people could prepare a little bit before. And I really think that porn should for big bigger productions bigger movies, especially yeah. Yeah. have what like in in mainstream a table read. I would love that rehearsal. Yeah, I know. And I don't even think it would take that much money mm-hmm. and time to do it. You could even do it in like one day to have just a rehearsal day. Yeah, and and it just would help the production so much, and it would help combat the stereotypes that people say oh everybody's nerve nobody can act but, yeah. well if you're just like so nervous you're gonna forget the lines and you mm-hmm. just got the script and you don't it's and you're not used to it anyway yeah. like i i mean yes i was given i mean one script by caden i think it was like at midnight the night before i had to do it and I had like this huge thing but i mean i've yeah. done stuff like that in the past so i was able to handle it and and do well with it but if you're not like a acting normally like mm-hmm. it, like on a regular basis and you feel insecure about that already yeah it's going to be worse so i think that's the main difference i think there needs to be more preparation yeah i agree a time for people yeah i agree because most of the time you do get the set either that day or you might get it the night before maybe the night before but you should have it like a yeah. week or so before just to yeah like- and most of the time people get to set and even if you got it the night before they haven't read, they haven't it. read it they don't even know what the movie is about you right. know so when oh, you go to do a scene you're like wait what am i supposed to be mad at this person I know. or so if, right <laughs> yeah right and i yeah and i just think if people would like at least talk over the script at a time it yeah. doesn't even have to be major rehearsals yeah. just know here's what, what the doing. movie's about yeah 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 exactly <laughs> that would help a ton um um was there ever a time Probably not now that knowing you and how you're answering all these questions. Was there ever a time you regretted doing porn? No, no, yeah. I made my whole life and career and yeah. come back and I got gotten so much out of it, you know, financially, yeah. awards, just making projects that I wanted to make, being able to act in things that mainstream would not have let me act in, in roles that they would not see me in. And yeah. I could really you know, break out that way. It's given me a writing career, yeah. acting career, like so much. So no. One of the things that you said in the book was that porn doesn't have to destroy people. It can actually like help like build them and make them who mm-hmm. they are. And I, I have felt that about mm-hmm. my porn career. I felt that in porn, I got to know who I was. I gained my knowledge of my own sexuality right. and what I wanted to do. And I gained so much of my personal person, I gained yeah. so much knowledge of who I was in pornography. That's great. And it just it changed my life for the better. And mm-hmm. I think it can do that for a lot of people. And most people just see it as such a, a negative place to be in. And I love how much positivity you bring yeah. to porn and really making people aware that we are people, you know, that yeah. we are human beings and we deserve to be treated as such yeah so and i think like the taboo treatment of people on the outside is so much worse than what happens within the yeah. industry it's always you know these people who are judging and it also makes it harder for girls to get into a safe space in the industry like you said mm-hmm. having a bad agent mm-hmm. there was more light shed on that than yes. girls could you know have more security and have more um support mm-hmm. to you know work how they want to but like work with good people and have yeah. people be accountable holding yes. these agents and everything accountable yeah it's gotten a lot better for me now now i have a well, female agent and yeah <laughs> she looks out for me yeah. so uh what do you love the most about being in pornography i love being able to just like sexually express myself and i think um i never realized before going into it how much i loved sexually performing and how yeah. fat, and i was good at it and yeah. i didn't ever think of myself like that but I really do love doing that and it's such Mm -hmm. a great outlet for me and I always think it's like a you know a dancer or something or you know some sort of performance artist it is I tell people that all the time porn is a dance it's a performing art it's a form of art and um that has been so great to be able to just break through with that and show my authentic true self yeah and having people support and accept it and celebrate it and i never thought that was possible yeah and um i think pornist can be a place where 
you know, people come into it because they feel other than in society because yes. they have unique situations with their sexuality or who mm-hmm. they are as a person or maybe they're shunned or cast out somewhere in like mainstream society and mm-hmm. they form, you know, a, a very family sort of unit where yeah. they're accepted and loved. It is that, a family union. Yeah. yeah. And it, um, but the outside world is like, it's more scary because when people leave to go to the outside world again, that's when bad things can really happen. Yeah. Like, I agree. I always think my porn people like are my family. It's yeah. weird because you you get into this group and you're like, oh, there are people like me yeah. and people who accept me and people yes. who want to be kind to me in yes. this little group. Yeah. And the moment I step outside of it, I'm like, oh, you guys hate me. I'm, oh, you guys hate me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know? Oh, I hate the fact that, if, you know, yeah. anyone would feel like that, especially you, oh, like out you. in society and stuff. But yeah, it's it's a very accepting yeah. Core group. And I was able to, I mean, I felt other than in many ways and, yeah. and being accepted for what I love to do and, and who I am was, is an amazing thing. Yeah. Your <laughs> story is incredible. You're a huge inspiration to oh, me, thanks. honestly, oh, like thank you. reading through your book, I was like, wow, there's so many more things I could be doing. I could be yeah. really like pursuing and going after things and not making the excuses of, you know, why X, Y, and Z isn't working and go out and do it yes. yourself. Oh, yes. You know? And so. I think, oh, that makes me so happy because I yeah. think if I, you know, impart any wisdom on anybody, yeah. please go out there and don't be worried about what other yeah. people think about you. I know there's taboos and I know people come down against you, but the more that you play into that other than, mm-hmm. then you're playing into that. And it's kind of funny because when I had, uh, and I mentioned this in my AVN speech with uh, Michael Jacobs, the producer. Mm-hmm. He told me when I said, well, since I'm a porn actress and doing this, and he's like, don't say that. What are you saying? You're an actress. <laughs> yeah. You're always an actress. Love that. When you say that, that makes you other than or not mm-hmm. as important as, mm-hmm. you know, and I think a lot of people in porn just do that naturally. Like yeah. they say, oh, well, we're just in porn or we're just, mm-hmm. and that's making you other than. So I, I yeah. really try to be conscious of it. I know I have to say, porn for reference or mainstream just yeah. so people know but I try to be like no I'm I'm an actress yeah. no matter what absolutely I love that Maitland <laughs> um thank you so much for being here you guys definitely go out and get her book <laughs> I'm telling you right now I did not want to put this down this is one of the best <laughs> books I probably read five books a year oh, and wow, this so yeah I am not an oh, avid reader wow. but I couldn't put it down like <laughs> oh, I, it was so so very good and um I thank you so much for being here if you want to tell them where they can find you um yes you can find me on all of the platforms basically at my name Maitland Ward M-A-I-T-L-A-N-D-W-A-R-D I have a somewhat TikTok Maitland talks T O K S, but I'm still I still don't have the hang of that whole thing. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> we're so, all learning. We're all learning. Yeah, there. I'm not good at the dance. Well, maybe I'm okay with the dances. Yeah, but, but <laughs> I'm pretty dumb, silly. Well, all right, guys. Until next time. Uh-huh. Um, if you like what you saw, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And until next time, adios.